Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this sample, I'm just going to program this part. I think in programming this part, you'll be introduced to some of the power of Top Solid Cam 7. Let's have a look. To begin with, I'm going to select this face, right mouse button click, and say I want a machine with the bottom of my cutter, so I'm going to choose end milling. Like that, I just need to choose a tool. Let's do that. Now I have some tools preloaded in my carousel already. It's a very common practice. So here, if I hover on them, I get a preview of them and what they're capable of. Uh, face mill is what I want to use, so I'm going to validate that. After I select it, you'll notice instantly over here that the tool path shows up. Great. Uh, from here, I'm just going to make a simple little change. I'm going to say stock to leave on the floor is going to be zero. I want to go right to finish. Okay? Like that, we'll validate. Here, Top Solid 7 goes to work. It generates the tool path as well as it's going to update the stock model for us. And then we'll see, of course, a little simulation. And you can see that toolpath is just perfect. Nice. Let's keep going. Next, maybe I'd like to machine this pocket. So I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to choose end milling again, because again, I'm going to machine with the bottom of my cutter. Uh, here, it's thinking we're going to use our face mill. I'm going to say no, that doesn't make much sense. Let's use our half inch end mill instead. That makes a lot more sense. And here, let's maybe see if we can find a good pocketing. Let's see what pocketing with style looks like. Nice. So this is a predefined saved machining routine. Looks good to me. Let's validate, see how it looks. So here I believe we're helical entering, uh, entering plus we're using high speed loops in the corners. Perfect. Let's see our simulation come down. There's our helix. Nice. Now from here, what I want to do is I'm going to turn on this toolpath, and I'm just going to drag and, draw, uh, drag and drop excuse me, a copy onto that face. We'll turn off the original, and here, first of all, you'll see it changed the strategy automatically to open pocketing, and that's okay, but you know what? I think I'm going to change my tool as well, just to be different. I'm going to say that I'd like a larger tool. So we'll go to one inch. You can see the toolpath is dynamically updating. As well, maybe we'll go in here, and we'll change our machining strategy a little bit. Okay, so up pops our dialog box. Uh, just so you know, you can ship these around, do with them what you want. You can resize them if you like. Um, doesn't matter. I'm going to go here to my end milling strategy and say I would like to do successive contouring. So we can see how everything works there. Um, maybe for our step over, we want to take a little bit less. So I'll say 40%. Again, perfect. Toolpath looks great. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say that stock to leave on the floor will be zero. We'll go right to finish. Okay, perfect. We'll validate that. So right now we're about three minutes into this video, and you can see we've created a lot of good toolpath. How about we do some uh, finishing of the floor here, or maybe these walls. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go to my pocketing, and I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to say that I'm going to pocket right to finish. We'll validate. This toolpath needs to be regenerated then. You'll see that here in a sec. So we'll just go ahead and tell it to regenerate. Perfect. So we have our updated stock model, and you can see the stock that we're leaving everywhere. Let's go ahead and finish this sidewall. I'm going to go here and say side milling. And we'll go ahead and change back to our half inch cutter. And when we switch back to our half inch cutter, I want to point something out. You notice here that we see the area to machine, but we don't see a preview of the tool path. And the reason for that is because the stock to leave on the wall is equal to the stock that's existing there, so there's nothing to machine. If we set this to zero, now we see our tool path. And again, to show you how smart the tool uh, path is, because it would be cutting air out here, it switches and rapids over. Pretty cool. But you know what? In this case, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to say that I want to go down an eighth inch depth of cut. Nope, oh, pardon me. That's the stock to leave. I'm going to do an eighth inch depth of cut. Perfect. But I'm going to change my machining strategy. I'm going to say that in this case, I don't want to do just simple toolpath like this. I would like to do helical contouring. So now we have one entry, one exit with a spring pass happening at the bottom. Perfect. And like that, we'll validate. And now that toolpath is done. And we can see by the simulation here, just one constant move down in Z. And this is all going to be output as simple G2s and G3s, by the way. Of course, with Z moves. Now, 
let's take this and let's see what happens if we drag and drop that onto this open profile. I'm going to drag and drop it right onto that face. And lo and behold, look at that. It even got this face as well at that Z level. And it's still doing helical contouring. It's just doing it on an open profile. I mean, how cool is that? We're doing helical profiling, so we're leading on, moving down in Z, leading off. The blue means we're switching to max machine feed, coming back over, so we're always staying in feed for here. And then we're moving over and doing this side. I think that's pretty awesome. Let's do some drilling, shall we? I'm going to select this hole right here, and I'm going to do hole machining. We do have a one-click do all of your drillings. I like to show the manual way as well, just to show you how simple it is. Uh, here it came up with twist drill. In fact, we only have one function for all of our drillings in Top Solid Cam 7. But here you can control the kind of machining it is. Just double click on the icon and you can choose the type of machining you want to handle. So here I want to start by centering. So now you'll notice it automatically grabbed my spotting drill and that's because that was loaded in my carousel already. And from here now, I'm just going to go to my geometry and I'm going to say same diameter, same depth and tell it to search. And there it's found all of them. And from here, I want to program my print diameter. I know that's 3 8 I'm going to say that it's just going to be 400 thousandths. That'll put a little chamfer on there. And we'll validate. And like that, our centering is done. Very cool. Let's go ahead and center some of these other holes. I'm going to go into here to get my hole right there. And I'll just go ahead and go to hole machining again. And again, we want centering. And again, we're going to go ahead to geometry. Same diameters, perfect. And in this case, I want my print diameter since this is for a quarter 20 tapped hole. You can see that by this. Um, I'm going to say that I'm going to make it 275. That way we get a nice chamfer up there. And again, we'll validate. Now that drilling's done. Or centering, excuse me. And now finally, we're going to go ahead and select this drilling here. And we'll do hole machining. And again, switch to centering. And we can set this to point 0.4, but what I want you to notice is the fact that the software was smart enough to know that we haven't machined out this counterbore yet. So even though I selected that hole down there to machine, it's doing our centering based on the actual material condition right now, which is awesome. This means that you're not going to crash your machine anymore. Validate. Perfect. So everything's been centered. Now let's see what we can do about finishing these. So maybe what I want to do now is this. Maybe I want to just go to hole machining directly. And what I'd like to do is copy the same holes out of the centering here into this geometry here. So just by dragging it out of my tree into here, I picked the same geometry. It went to drilling. It's picked my drill. I can go. Of course, you can go in and specify whether you want uh, pecking or clearing or what have you. But like that, drag and drop simple. That drilling's done. Let's keep going. I'm going to go here, and I'll say hole machining again. This time for this one. It's got the drill. We'll validate. And we'll do the one more. Let's go hole machining. We'll drag this one in there. Perfect. And there's that. And now finally, let's do uh, one more thing here. Let's go ahead and do some hole machining one more time. This time, however, we're going to go ahead to geometry. We'll select this. Okay. And actually, I'm going to cancel all of this. I'll show you yet another way to deal with this. Okay. So here what we're going to do is I'm just going to control uh, select my operation, control C, go here, control V, and it's going to paste a copy of this operation there. This is another way to cheat. I'm just going to double click on this to edit it and now I'm going to change the type of drilling to tapping. And here it grabbed the right tap and I validate. So it's another quick way of accomplishing the task at hand. Uh, finally let's go ahead and finish this and again I'm a lazy guy. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on this side milling operation here which is helical and I'm going to drag and drop it to that face and you'll see that it just took that tool and did helical contouring down to finish that profile there. So 
hopefully this gives you a great idea of what Top Solid Cam 7 is capable of and how quickly you can get the job done.